out there own a sports car. Yeah, yeah. What do you have? You must be. is a sports car. I'm sorry, but I, whatever it is I have is out of line because I thought that the Ferrari was a sports car. I mean, Volkswagen. How many Volkswagen owners out there? Want to hear how popular you are? Want to hear? Want to hear? Okay. Up with the mics. This is a poll which will be taken to find out exactly how many people like Volkswagen owners? Are you, you ready for it? Now just be, hold your votes. All those, and please, I'm going to give it to the Volkswagen people first. All those that like the Volkswagen and the people that drive them, you better, you better come through strong, man, because I'm telling you, you're going to be in trouble. Say aye. Aye. I'll give you another chance, man. All those like Volkswagen, then Volkswagen owners, say aye. Aye. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for the ultimate? All those disliking Volkswagen, then their owners, say no. Aye. You thought you were well liked. Didn't you? you really thought you had it. Down with the mics. Just wanted you to get a little idea. And there are a couple of people running around here in Volkswagen that are not nice people. I'll give you one example, something I had an experience with. It. See, I had a Rolls Royce. It cost $19,000. And it stopped running. The thing just went, and I'm sitting out there in the middle of the highway, you know. What? I'm getting ready to tell that right now. Were you listening to me when I started talking about that? Huh? Okay. But do you have a Volkswagen? Mustang Sally. <laughs> Gotta slow your Mustang down. No, Mustang's groovy car. Yeah. But I guess they're groovy. I don't know too much about them. I see them coming, Mustang. But the VW. People are not nice. Because I was I was stuck in the snow. I really was with the rolls. Yes, it is being stuck in the snow and freezing to death. It's, it's gangs of fun. I was just sitting there saying to myself with my fingers hurting me because it was very cold and my feet saying, when are we going to get some warm? And the team is this is gangs of fun. Pretty soon I'll be dead. This is... Really gangs of fun. I was gangs and ganging of fun. Coming in gangs. So here comes a guy in a VW. Now it's bad enough that I have an eighteen thousand dollar car that will not go. But here comes a guy with a fourteen hundred dollar special supercharged up radio heater white wall tires and blue book and he's gonna hurr, doesn't go past me like he should stops the car we well, get a hundred miles to the gallon too at the bank out breaks we use a rubber band that i don't need from anybody i don't need that from people you know it's just out of line See, but a Volkswagen owner will not tell you about when they're driving down the highway, how when the truck comes from an opposite direction, how do you wind up in a ditch? And you haven't even turned the steering wheel. Yeah. How are we in a ditch? I don't know. The cars are through the trucks. That's all it is. Yeah. They won't tell you about how they're barred from the Golden Gate Bridge because they keep changing lanes without moving the steering wheel. They don't say nothing to you about why you gotta roll the windows down before you, when you get in the car and you close the door. Because if you don't, if the windows are up, your brains can smash. 
against the window and you have to go to the back of my brain just from against the window over here. What happened? Well, let's uh, close the door the whole side. They don't tell you about it. They have a head-on collision with a dog. They lose. <laughs> no, all they know is 100 miles to the gallon. <laughs> but you are looking at a sports car freak. See? Freak old time with a sports car. Any kind of car. If it does 180. Yeah, give me, give me, give me. I got that. That's me. And I cannot stop myself. I try to stop myself. I said, stop. I said, no, give me, give me, give me. I said, and I got to bought the Ferrari. And another thing is, I'm, although I like a car that will do over 180, I know nothing about them. Won't even read the booklet on the car. Don't even care. All I know is, if the car's going, and if it goes, it's broken. And, you know, and I call up the mechanic. And, Hello? The car's broken. I'm going to fix it. I don't even know where the gas tank is. I'm serious about that. Pulled right into the gas station one time. Pulled right up. The guy came out, white suit, you know, gas station attendant with his name, Bob, across the chest, you know. Comes over and he says, All right, what do you want? Fill up! That's what I know. And the guy said, Where is the gas tank? I said, I don't know. You're the gas man. Find the gas tank. So now the guy's walking all around the car, man. He's just going around the car, just looking and looking, getting ready to put it in the tires. No, no, not there, you fool. Well, where's the gas tank? I don't know where it is. Well, it is scan the camera, something, you got the thing in. No, it's not. Find the gas tank. Okay. Well, what if I just pour it all over the car? Maybe it'll suck in somewhere around. All right? Now, I have found out through stupidity that there's an instrument in the car which will let you know just how dumb you are. I mean, there's no pity. Windshield wipers, they have no pity on you whatsoever. You hit the wrong button, they'll tell you, dumb guy, dumb guy, dumb guy, dumb guy, dumb guy. Dumb guy. And then you can't find the button to turn it off. Dumb guy, dumb guy. Sunshine, and people keep turning on their windshield wipers. I just passed them by. Is it raining? I don't know what it is. was on. Dumb guy, dumb guy, dumb guy. Dumb guy. The Ferrari is such a fast car that when you buy it, they automatically give you 12 speeding tickets. Now, this is not a bad thing because all you have to do is, whenever you get caught, all you have to do is just put it in the basket. They have a long handle on the basket when they pass by, you just put it in there. I cannot figure out where they come from. You are looking at a guy that has searched high and low before he will go out speeding anywhere. And they always come up from behind somewhere. I can't figure it out. It's driving me crazy. Where they are? I look left, right, forward, back all the time. I'm looking like a man is just spinning around. And they I'm telling you, one time my car broke down. I called a mechanic. And the mechanic came over, had a white suit on, uh, Bob, <laughs> opens up the hood, and he looks inside, and he's talking all that. Well, your cracker meters are all underneath the rope, and the sack, and the aggregate, and you got the dual lavish, you know, with the, with the camshaw rink back, and all the carburetors underneath the illuminator, and the premiator, and all the crack, and the sack, and the roof. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, what's the matter with the car? He says, it's broken. <laughs> I said, well, what's really wrong with this? No, you just got a lot of gunk in there. That's all. There's a lot of gunk in there. And uh, what you have, see, it's a high-performance car, and you got to burn this thing out. I mean, you just can't leave it sitting there. You, you can't drive it 35 miles an hour and expect this car to perform properly for you. I mean, you got to drive it, uh, maybe uh, you got to burn it out by doing, uh, put it in second gear and drive like 100 miles an hour. Oh, really? Where am I going to find a place to do 100 miles an hour? Any side street. <laughs> so I take the car on the side street, and I'm looking all around for the police. And I look all around for the police. I don't see them. And I get in my car, and I say, <laughs> I, the closest I figured, they, they got to be coming out of my trunk. <laughs> Guys are hiding out right in the trunk, man. I said, 
And then the guy says, well, 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 what's the matter? Why are we going so fast? I was burning out the gunk. <laughs> well, come on, go to the police station. We're going to get the gunk out of you. <laughs> well, that's a Ferrari. I'm walking around the department store, and I bump into Carol Shelby. <clears throat> so, Carol starts chewing me up. What you doing driving them foreign cars? I said, what do you mean? You got them Ferraris and them Maseratis and all them foreign cars. You supposed to be driving an American car. You're an American, ain't you? Yeah. Well, drive an American car. I said, well, in the first place, an American car only does 160. That's all there's to it. Ferrari goes 180. I need a car that does 180 or better to get to work. <laughs> because I live two miles, you know, from work. And so I can say to my wife, goodbye, dear. And I'm at work, see? <laughs> And so he, well, I'm going to tell you something right now. The Cobra people, my, my people, will build a car for you, and I don't want to see you in another Ferrari as long as you live. You understand that? I said, yeah. I said, how fast is it going to go? It'll do over 200 miles an hour. You're kidding. No, sir, Rebob. It'll do over 200 miles an hour because I'm having one built for me, and it's going to have automatic shift. You won't have to worry about no clutch. It's 900 horsepower, 427 cubic inches, and it'll have... Do everything. <laughs> I said, okay, man. Make that car for me. I'm telling you right now, it's going to have dual superchargers, going to have uh, dual horsepower, going to have dual engines in it, going to have dual wheels, dual steering wheels, dual, dual glove compartment, everything. Then it's going to be dual. And you and I will just drive down the highway doing over 200 miles an hour and loving it. I said, okay. Now, I'm like a kid, Christmas Eve, waiting for this car. I've got to have this car. Because, I mean, to me, it means a lot. It means that I can put down a lot of people. The kids with them Chevys and the, and the, big, and the big wheels. They go all the way around like about the size of the airplane wheels. And, and the kids always driving downhill and everything. <laughs> Leave me alone now. Hey, you want to drag? No, sir. Get away from here. I'll drive by Steve McQueen's house and put him down. Hey, Steve, you don't have this one. Yeah, I love that, man. It's going to be my car over 200 miles an hour. I just see myself over 200, over 200, over 200. One night. The doorbell rang. That's my doorbell. My wife had that doorbell put in. That wasn't my doorbell. See, when we had the house built, I put in my own doorbell, which I thought was really groovy. And it is. It's cool. I get tired of When you push my doorbell, it says, Somebody's at the door. That's very hip to me. I love that, man. You know. And the house man comes up to me and says, Mr. Cosby, is a man out there with the cobra. What? The cobra. You're kidding. No, sir. Have him come in. And the guy walks in, and he's all dressed in black. And he's got his name across the thing. That's Bob. <laughs> How'd you know? Did you did you meet him before? Did you? Bob. Bob. Of course. And he says, here are the keys to your cobra, Mr. Cosby. Is it outside? Yes, sir. Oh, man. Give me the keys. And I ran upstairs and I changed clothes, put on my Italian racing shoes. I put on a shirt with an ascot. And I put on my scarf. And it was starched going straight back. <laughs> And I had my hair all starched and going straight back. Look out, Snoopy! And I come downstairs, and I go outside, and I look, and there she is. Oh, Lulu. It's got chrome pipes coming out of the engine, wrapping all the way around the car, forming into a roll bar. And on the hood, there's a, a hickey. That's where the superchargers live. Right there in that hickey. And I said, oh, man. My car. Oh, pipes, pipes coming out. Exhaust pipes.
like this coming out, shooting out 18, 19 diameter inches, cubic centimeter pipes. Pipes! Wait till them kids in the Chevy see these pipes! They'll go crazy and they'll say, oh wow, look at them pipes! Man, this guy's got pipes coming out of his car, oh wow. And I opened the door, and I got in the car. My car. Oh, I love you, car. And I, and I just, kind of just, just kind of oozed into the seat. My car. I wrapped both hands around the steering wheel, and I just kind of sat there and went, I said, why don't you start it up? <laughs> yeah, I forgot all about that, man. And I put the key in. And right by the key, there's a gold plaque. It says, this car is made especially for Mr. Bill Cosby by Carol Shelby and Company. 900 horsepower, 427 cubic inch engine, dual, supercharger, dual, everything, and will do over 200 miles an hour, and it's faster than anything Steve McQueen owns. <laughs> and I looked at the speedometer. The speedometer starts at zero, goes all the way up around to 200 mph, and under the 200, there's still more room, and the words, oh wow. <laughs> Oh, and there's a fire extinguisher. Now this is really groovy, man. A fire extinguisher. Now, can you tell me how many cars have a fire extinguisher so that they're driving down the street, man, you see a house on fire, you know, you just jump right out of it. And they said, my goodness, thank you so much. I loved it. And the scarf was just sitting there, straight back, flying in the wind. And I put it in neutral and smiled at the guy. 900 horsepower. Oh boy. And I started it up. Why don't you 
need you to get around the block for a spin. Didn't I? <laughs> I pulled an emergency brake back as far as it would go. <laughs> Put my foot on the brake as far as it would go. I checked to see if it was in neutral. I fastened my safety belt. The first time in my life I've ever fastened a safety belt. Now I know why they make safety belts. They're not concerned with my safety. The ambulance driver is too lazy to look for the body. And I started the car because I don't know any other word for it. Thank you. 